So he's he's from Italy. He's not. But what was from Italy? Why why are we even talking? Oh. Mr. Monopoly Man. <clears throat> Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at um, some of the remaining tasks and scripts within the post-migration process uh, before we talk about wrapping everything up all together. Those are the wrappers from my, um, uh, my Nutrigrain bars. <laughs> Okay, today we're going to walk through one of the most important remaining uh, post-migration tasks, which is the autopilot registration PowerShell script. Um, so what's going to happen here is we're going to have a PowerShell script that collects the hardware data from the PC after it's been migrated to the uh, destination tenant, right, tenant B, and it's going to place it in autopilot for us. Uh, this is also a super helpful script if you're just looking to enroll a bunch of things on autopilot that are out in the field maybe they're not you can't touch each one to get the autopilot hardware information so this is a pretty good way to do that and we're also going to apply our group tag to it so we're going to start off just like we did uh pretty much with everything else we do we're going to um start and append our log and log um we'll say start transcript path is going to be C program data uh, into migration post migration dot log okay and that'll be a verbose log and we'll write host so that we know we started uh, begin logging for autopilot registration dot 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 Okay, so this isn't going to be like some of the other scripts where we just invoke uh, REST methods to the graph. We're actually going to use a module for this so it's properly registered in autopilot. So a few things. Before we do the module, uh, what we're going to need is we're going to need to make sure we have the NuGet package provider installed on the, uh, on the PC. So in order to do that, we are going to declare it first. And we're going to say NuGet is equal to get package provider NuGet. It's pretty simple. Um, now, if you were to look at, I'm gonna open this up real quick. So if you were to look at that output on your machine, um, get package provider name NuGet, it's gonna, it's gonna pop up. So it's either gonna be there or it's not. That's why this is a good test for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if, uh, so we're gonna write host, checking for NuGet package provider. Okay, so we're gonna say if, if, if there's no NuGet, right? If NuGet is not there, we're gonna say write host, uh, we'll say NuGet not found installed. And we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to try to do that. So we're going to do a try, try catch. So we're going to try to install package provider name NuGet. Uh, oh, we don't need the. Uh, we don't need the confirm here. False, and we're just gonna force that. Um, and then we'll say write host, you get installed. Now, if for some reason we have a problem, we're just gonna spit out the error message. So let's set message equals message, and we'll write host. Um, error installing you get and we'll just call that message um if new gets already installed then after our it's if statement we can just simply say write host package uh new get is already installed okay so real easy there, not a big deal. I can get rid of this. Okay, same thing with the, uh, I'll just clean that up to make it a little neater there. There we go. 
gotta keep everything organized and neat. Says the guy who creates these videos for you in front of a little literal toy shop. Um, okay, so next we have to check for the modules. So the modules we're gonna need here, uh, we're gonna list them out because there's more than one. And whenever you're, um, whenever you're doing more than one module here, let me actually make a comment there. Uh, check. If needed. Whenever you have to import or install or check for multiple modules, this is a great way to do it. So we're going to say install and import required modules. So best way to do this is with a variable required modules. And we're going to create an array. And we need two modules. We need Microsoft Graph into and then we also need the windows autopilot in tune so we need both those modules so for each one for each module in required modules let's give ourselves some space i like to give a little space down here there we go that's perfect so for each module here we're going to install it right um and we can allow clobber you can also do a check first um there's a few ways to do this basically so one way to do this if you don't care if it's already there you can install module name module allow clobber and force it'll just steamroll over it uh what you could do is you can also uh essentially do um a check right so for each module in there um you will say um so for each module in module right you're gonna say uh installs equals get uh installed module name is module Okay, and then what you're gonna do is, if it's not installed, same thing we do with the package provider. If not installed, right? You install it, right? So at this point, we can just do install module name module force. Okay, um, and then you can import it, import module name module and you don't need to force uh, the import um, however if you don't believe they're on the majority of machines we can skip most of that and I, I believe we do skip this in the github version so I'm just gonna skip it and I'm just gonna install and import this is gonna make uh, life a little bit easier for for everyone involved um, so we are just going to do install module name module allow clobber force and then we'll import module name actually we can just go right to module there there we go perfect and that's it so now we have our modules the next thing you're going to have is all your app information right your client id Again, same thing we had in the previous scripts. Client secret. Client secret, right. Uh, now here's the thing. Because we are not using the invoke rest method, we're gonna be using a module. So we need a few new things. We're gonna be using the connect mg graph command right so this is a little newer so this is going to allow us to connect um connect to the graph make the calls we want but this is going to use the app wrenches as opposed to when you connect ms graph and we're used to signing in so this is just a newer version of this so what we're going to do is uh so typically here let me we would have the tenant name we have our in our client id and secret and we update the credentials and we connect we need a few new values here so we need the tenant id right 
which is, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we need the client secret credential. So what is that? We don't really have that. Is that the client secret? It sounds like it, but it's not. We actually have to make the client secret credential. Um, so we're going to be doing an upcoming video about this and the different off methods coming up, but I'm going to show you a quick way to get that done. Uh, basically for this, so you do you go, you, you are going to need your tenant ID. Um, if you don't know where to get your tenant ID, it's very simple. You just can go to your entry portal or formerly known as Azure AD. Okay. And, um, go to your overview and that's your tenant ID right there. That value. So that'll be your tenant ID. So I'll just, because we're going to be dealing in hypotheticals, I'm going to show you now, tenant ID. So that'll be your tenant ID. But how do we get this client secret credential? So we get, need two more variables. So first we need a secure secret, meaning we have to take our secret string and we're going to have to um, convert it convert it to an actual secure string. You can't just put it in here. So let's make a client secure secret. And where that's just going to take, let's say convert to secure string. We're going to put in as the string, the client secret from above as plain text force. All right. Now with the secret secured that way, we can create the client secret secure client secret credential what did i write client secure secret credential all right that's going to equal we have to literally make a new object so this is going to be a combination of things okay so the type name is system management automation PS credential and the argument list is going to take two things. Guess what they are? Client ID and the client secure secret. Come on, work with me here. There we go. So now when we come down here, we can just literally pass that through because this one value has both the, the client and the secret inside of it. So little something new there. Let's put a little um, little comment for that. Let's keep two and a half. And after a, kind of a big piece like that, I like to do my little comment break thing. That just tends to make this all that much. Okay, the rest of this is fairly straightforward. There's only a few pieces to do here, right? First piece is going to be um, get the hardware ID, serial number of the hardware hash. So we're gonna say get autopilot hardware info. First thing we need is the hardware ID. And for that, we're just gonna get the object uh, spell it wrong, namespace, root, simv2, mdm, dmm, ap. And that has a class of mdm, div, detail, x01. And we're going to filter by the instance id for extension and parent ID equals dev detail. Um, all you need to know is this is where the autopilot hash comes from. Uh, device hardware detail. Uh, data, sorry. That is literally all that is. So that's going to be our, our hardware hash. Um, we missed something somewhere. What did we miss? Get objects. Oh, right after dev. Yep. I was too quick there. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Then we need the serial number. Well, we've gotten this a million times already. So 
this should be pretty easy. Um, Win32 bias. Serial number. Um, one thing we are going to do here is we are going to add a condition. If there's a... If that is null, uh, is null or white space, then the serial number, serial number, is going to be just the computer name. That's just a precaution. That's an autopilot thing. Um, still not going to help. Now, remember group tag. We need this again. Luckily, it's stored in our XML. Uh, so basically, we just have to pull that. So the XML is going to be config equals get content. Um, that's going to be located in the program data area into migration. MEM settings.xml and we'll pull the tag right out of that. So we'll call that group tag. And fit up. Oh, whoa. Got a little overzealous there. MEM config dot config dot uh, group tag. Okay. And as you know, that's really all you need for autopilot. Um, the hardware hash, serial number group tag. So now we can just say add. So let's comment that add device to autopilot so this is one of the windows autopilot intune commands add autopilot imported device takes a serial number luckily for us we have one hardware identifier is the hardware id and the group tag okay because that can take a minute we're going to actually do jesse's little start sleep thing five seconds and then we will disable schedules task as we've been doing with these so real simple disable disable schedule task task name autopilot registration and then we can pipe that out here uh, disabled autopilot registration task. And we can stop the transcripts. Transcripts. Great. So now our device, after being moved over to tenant B, is going to be fully registered in autopilot and that is going to be the last of the post migration tasks there's a few others in there um, nothing that quite exciting right we escrow a bit locker key we um, place a device in the right group um, i would say uh, if there's one of particular interest right go ahead that you find in the github if you want more explanation on one of them drop it in the comments below i'd be happy to address it but we're on our way next time to packaging this thing up and pushing it through into one, two, three, four.